just a quick tutorial on how to make a box plot. Um, in the end, our goal is to be able to make a display of data that looks like this. I'll come back to this picture in a second. I'm just going to describe to you um, a little bit about a box plot before we actually learn how to draw it. So a box plot is sometimes referred to as a five number summary um, that shows the distribution or the spread of a set of quantitative data. Remember, quantitative data, data that can be, that can be described using numbers. Um, so the five numbers and the five number summary include the minimum of the data set, the maximum of the data set, and then in between we have Q1, Q2, Q3. Q2 is the median of the entire data set, Q1 is the median of the lower half, Q3 is the median of the upper half. So Q2 divides data in half, and then we look at the lower half, not including Q2, and find the median again, which we call Q1, then we look at the upper half, find the median of that half, and call that Q3. And we use these five numbers um, to display the data using a box plot. And just in case you forget what the median of a set of data is, just remember the median is not the average, it's the middlemost piece of data. So if you have three pieces of data, the second one is in the middle, that would be the median of your set of data. If you have an even number of data points, finding the median is a little more difficult, you have to find the average of the two middlemost pieces of data. Um, a little trick to help you figure out which piece of data is in the middle, it can be tricky sometimes when you have a large data set, um, you just figure out how many pieces of data you have, we call that n, add one and then divide by two, and that'll tell you which piece of data is in the middle. So if we use our example from before where I said there's three pieces of data, let's say our data is two, five, ten, clearly, and make sure, in order to find the median, I should have said this before, the data has to be in order. Um, so always make sure your data is in order from least to greatest. I have three pieces of data. Clearly, this one's in the middle. The second piece of data is in the middle. But if you weren't able to see that, you could just take, you could use this formula, n plus one divided by two. So we have three pieces of data. So we do three plus one divided by two. Four divided by two is two. That tells us that the second piece of data right here is in the middle. Okay. This is a picture of what your final box plot is going to look like. What's going to happen, and I've got labeled here um, the, pro the different parts of the box plot, so you can see um, where the five number summary, so the min, q1, q2, q3, q3, and max, sorry, um, go when you're drawing the box plot. So you start off by drawing the box. The box extends from q1 to q3, the median of your lower half to the median of your upper half, and then you draw a line in the box at Q2, the median of the entire data set. And then you extend these lines, which we call whiskers, out to the biggest value and the smallest value that are not outliers. I'll explain to you in a minute how to find outliers, but we extend the whiskers to the maximum and the minimum point um, that are not outliers. If you have outliers, I'll show you how to calculate them later, you plot the outliers with dots only, and you don't extend the whiskers to the outliers. So notice that this box plot, really what it does, it divides the data into four segments or quartiles. That's why we have these Q1, Q2, Q3. Um, Q1 stands for quartile one, quartile two, quartile three. We have four quartiles here if we look carefully. Um, let me just get a highlighter here so I can show you. So 25% of our data is within here. 25% of our data is within here. 25% within here and 25% within here. The box represents the middle 50% of the data. 50% of the data would fall within that box, okay? So these three dividing lines, Q1, Q2, Q3, divides it out into four quartiles. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's go through very quickly the steps to draw in that box plot. You have to start by making sure the data is in order from smallest to largest. You find your five number summary, we can do it manually or using a graphing calculator using a, a function called one variable statistics. I'll show you that as well. We then have to draw our number line, making sure that the number line has values at least as low as our minimum value and at least as high as our maximum value. Um, then, like I said, we draw our rectangular box to extend from Q1 to Q3. And then we draw a line through the box at the median Q2. And then what we do is um, we draw two whiskers from the corresponding ends of the box to the most extreme data value that is not an outlier. Um, and we do that by figuring out what data values are inside the thresholds, and I'll explain that to you in a second. And then we put dots or other marks, usually dots, um, for each outlier value. So to figure out if any data values are outliers, we have to calculate what are called the threshold values, the lower threshold and the upper threshold. 
and then if any data falls um, below the lower threshold or above the upper threshold, then those are considered outliers, and we don't extend our whiskers to those, we just draw a dot um, for those outlier points. So this is how we calculate the lower threshold. We do Q1, the mean of our lower half, minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. To find the upper threshold, we do Q3, the mean of our upper half, plus 1.5 times the interquartile range. And the interquartile range, we calculate that by doing Q3 minus Q1. So it's basically the width of the box. And I just made a note here, don't draw thresholds on the box plot. After you calculate these threshold values, in no way do they get graphed on your box plot. They're just used to determine if we have any outlier values or not. So we don't extend our whiskers to these thresholds. We don't graph those thresholds in any way. They're just used to determine if we have outliers. Okay, let's go ahead and do two quick examples. The first one I may take a little bit more time to do, but the second one I'm going to do quickly. Okay, so example one. The Penguins were one of the best teams of the 90s. They won two Stanley Cups in that decade. Below is a list of the points they had in each of the 10 regular seasons in the 90s. Let's display this data using a box plot. So here's the points they had in each of the regular seasons in the 90s. So there are 10 seasons in, 10 seasons in the 90s. Um, what we need to do first, if you remember back to the step one, it was put the data in order. So I trust you can do that. Here's the data put into order. Now that it's in order, what we need to do is figure out our min, our max, and our Q1, Q2, Q3, our five number summary. So to do that, it's probably easiest to start off with min and max. Our min value is 61, and our max value is 119. Now what we need to do is find Q2, the median of the entire data set. Before you can find Q1 and Q3, you need to find Q2, the median of the entire data set. So if you remember the trick I told you before, to find which of these values is in the middle, Let's figure out, okay, how many data values do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So the trick I told you, we do 10 plus 1 over 2. That's 11 over 2, which is 5.5. That means, because we have an even number of data points, there's not going to be one value that is exactly in the middle. We're going to have to find the average of the two middlemost pieces of data. So we're looking for a value, but since we got 5.5 for this little trick, we're looking for the data value between the fifth and the sixth data value. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So our Q2, our median of our entire data set, is going to be the number that is between 88 and 90. To figure out what's between 88 and 90, add them, divide by 2, and we get 89. 89 is between 88 and 90. Q2 is 89. Okay, now the data is divided in half. Q2 is right in the middle. To the left of Q2, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pieces of data. To the right of Q2, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pieces of data. It divides it directly in half. That's what a median does. So now let's look at the lower half. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pieces of data. 5 plus 1 divided by 2 is 6 over 2, which is 3. So the third piece of data, 1, 2, 3, that's going to be our Q1. That divides the lower half of the data in half once again. 2 to the left of Q1, 2 to the right of Q1. It divides it in half, so Q1 is 87. Now we look at the upper half. There's five pieces of data in the upper half. So once again, the third one is going to be in the middle. That is what we call Q3, our third quartile value, 101. We now have our five number summary. We could be able to graph this box plot, but we have to check for outliers first before we graph it, because we might not be able to extend our whisker all the way to the max and the min if either of those values are outliers. So to do that, we're going to have to calculate our lower and our upper threshold values. Um, before we can do that, we need to know what the IQR is, which is Q3 minus Q1, which in this case is 101 minus 87, which gives us 14. So if we want our lower threshold, remember that was Q1, which was 87, minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. If we want our upper threshold, we take our Q3 and add 1.5 times the interquartile range. So 1.5 times 14, well that's 21. So 87 plus 21 is 108. 101, oh sorry I was supposed to subtract. I added by accident, I need to subtract, not add. So I do 87 minus 21, so that'll give me 66. Good thing I corrected that. And this time we're adding. Okay, so our lower threshold, we take Q1 and subtract 1.5 times the IQR, which is 21 in this case, so I get 66. 
This time I want to add 1.5 times the IQR to my Q3 value. So 101 plus 21, 122. Okay, so I have my upper and my lower thresholds. Do I have any outliers? Do I have any values bigger than that or less than this? Um, nothing bigger than 122, but I do have a value less than 66 right here. This is an outlier. Outlier. That's the only value that is an outlier. So therefore, 61 is an outlier. You should make a note of that somewhere. Now we can make our box plot. So we start by drawing our box to extend between Q1 and Q3, so between 87 and 101. So 87 is about here, 101 is about there. There's the box for our box plot. We draw a line at Q2, which is 89. So 89 is about here. And then I draw my whiskers that extend to the maximum value that is not an outlier. So I can extend it all the way to 119, because 119 is not an outlier. So I can extend this all the way out to 119. And I'm just going to show that it stops there with that little line. And then <clears throat> I need to extend the left whisker all the way to the lowest value that is not an outlier. Well, I can't extend it to 61, because 61 is an outlier. So what I do is I extend it to 84. That's the next lowest value that is not an outlier. So I extend it to 84 which is just right there. And notice I didn't extend it to the lower threshold value or anything like that. Remember I said we don't graph these lower threshold values at all. But now what I need to do is make sure I indicate the outlier by putting a, a dot at the outlier value of 61. So I go to 61, which is all the way over here, and I put a dot showing that there's an outlier there. So there's my graph uh, of the points for the penguins in the 90s. Okay, so um, here's my minimum value that's not an outlier, here's my Q1, my Q2, my Q3, and my maximum value that's not an outlier. So there's my box plot. Let's do one more example. Um, actually, I'm going to show you on the calculator how we could have gotten our five, number sum our five number summary without having to do all of this manually, counting which point is in the middle and so on. So what you could have done to get this five number summary on your TI-83 or 84 or Inspire calculator. Um, input the data into a list, which I've already done. You just do that by pressing Stat Edit, and then input your data into a list. It doesn't have to be in order. And then what you're going to do is hit Stat, Calc, One Variable Statistics, and then uh, you tell the calculator, and it'll default saying that it's going to check L1 for the data, and that's where we inputted the data. So we'll leave list as L1, and then you just go Calculate, and there we go. Um, we'll just have to scroll down a little bit. And there's our five number summary right here. Min, Q1, Q2, Q3, max. And if you notice, it matches up exactly with what we have here. Min, Q1, Q2, Q3, max. Um, we could also look at the box plot if we wanted to. We'll just turn the stat plot. Um, we'll turn it on. Uh, choose the type of graph we want. We actually want this one here that shows that we want the outliers. Sometimes you'll hear this called a modified box plot. Um, the data is in L1. Good. Um, if we hit zoom 9, that'll zoom in on the graph of our data. And there's our box plot. And if we hit trace, what we could do is we could see, um, we could go uh, over here, um, see the outlier 61. And then we can see 84 is the minimum value that's not an outlier. Then we have our Q1, our Q2, our Q3, and our maximum value that's not an outlier. So that's just a nice, easy way to check and make sure you've done your box plot correctly. Okay, let's go ahead and do one more example. So a random survey of people at a golf course asked them how many times they had seen Happy Gilmore. The results are shown below in ascending order. Okay, it's already in order for us. That's nice. Create a box plot to display the data. So I'm going to do this one a little bit quicker. First thing we have to do is count how many pieces of data we have. Actually, let's write down our min and our max first. Uh, our min is 1. Our max is 26. It's already in order for us, so it's nice and easy for that. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 pieces of data. 19 plus 1 over 2 is 10. That tells us that the 10th piece of data, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, the 10th piece of data is going to divide the data exactly in half. 
Now what we should have, we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 to the right, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 to the left. That divides it exactly in half. That's our Q2. Now what we need to do is look at the lower half and the upper half and find the median of those. Now we're not going to include Q2 in either the lower or the upper half. Okay, So make sure you don't accidentally count that as part of your lower or your upper half. So in the lower half, like I said, we have 9 values. Um, of 9 values, 9 plus 1 over 2, that's 10 over 2, which is 5. That tells us the fifth of the 9 is in the middle. It's going to divide it in half. So 1, 2, 3, 4, here's the fifth. There's our Q1. And same with the upper, 1, 2, 3, 4, here's the fifth. That's our Q3, the median of the upper half. So we can write our values down. Q1 is 3. Q2 is... Whoops. Let me just click off that. Q2 was 5, and Q3 was 10. Our interquartile range, Q3 minus Q1, in this case, is 10 minus 3, which is 7. So <clears throat> our lower threshold, remember what we do is we take our Q1 value, 3, and then we take away 1.5 times the interquartile range, which is 7. So what we're going to do is do 3 minus 1.5 times 7. Uh, that'll give us 10.5. 3 minus 10.5, which will give us negative 7.5. Okay, well, we don't have any values below negative 7.5. That's for sure. So there's no outliers to the left of the box. Let's check to the right of the box. So we have to do 10, our Q3 value, plus 1.5 times the interquartile range. So that means we're going to be doing 10 plus 10.5, because 1.5 times 7 is 10.5, so that's 20.5. Do we have any values bigger than 20.5? Yes, we do, which means this value here is an outlier, which means we can't extend the whisker all the way to that value, because that value is an outlier, so we'll only extend the whisker to 15, um, the biggest value that is not an outlier. So let's make our box plot. So our box is going to go from Q1 to Q3, so from 3 to 10. So it's going to go from 3 to 10. We draw a line at Q2, which was 5. And what we do is we extend our whisker to the lowest value that's not an outlier, which is 1. And then we extend the other whisker to the largest value that is not an outlier, which is 15. And then what we do is we show the outlier by putting a dot at the outlier's place, 26. So right here. Good, so that's, that box plot is done. Remember this divided the data into four quartiles. We have uh, Q1 is the upper boundary for the first quartile. Q2 is the upper boundary for the second quartile. Q3 is the upper boundary for the third quartile, and our fourth quartile, the highest quartile, is actually extends to here. 25% uh, of the data is here, 25% here, 25% here, 25% here, which means the box represents the middle 50% of the data. Okay, so that's it for box plot. Um, and just so you know, not all box plots are going to have an outlier. Um, I just did two examples that do have an outlier because they're harder to make because you have to uh, make sure not to extend your whisker all the way to the outlier. You extend it to the largest or the smallest value that is not an outlier. All right, that's it. Make sure you go to jensenmath.ca, get the worksheet that goes along with this, and practice it yourself.